as you can tell, this is the room that I did it in. That's because this is the gun room. When me and my brother were growing up, we would visit my grandparents um, almost every weekend and sometimes more often, especially over uh, holiday breaks and stuff like that. And I remember it being the opposite of our house, where the house that I grew up in, it was like, what do you call it, pulling teeth to be able to get a paintball gun. But then here is where we would come to get like more of an understanding about guns and to learn stuff. And my pap would teach us um, and tell us whatever we asked. And he took us to the shooting range when we were young. I think I was, I think I was ten the first time I shot a pistol at the shooting range. Um, but just for that reason, I feel like it made me that much more, you know, excited about knowing about guns and learning about them. Because they're this scary, dangerous thing to a lot of people. Um, understandably so. But then if you respect them enough, and learn enough, and are just conscientious about it, you have a lot less to worry about. So I just remember feeling that way, but... Um, there was no discussion of, like, being able to have them. So when I would come here, it would be... There's all this stuff around me. It would be the Disneyland for guns. That's, that's what this is up here. The gun room is the Disneyland for guns. If you picture Mickey Mouse with a Gatling gun, with all the ammo over his shoulder with a cigar in his mouth. You know, like, uh, shooting the Gatling gun. It says the Disneyland of guns. The gun room. Alright, guys, if, uh, if I ever make merch, that'll be the first shirt idea, is Mickey Mouse with a cigar. Um, like with that Max Payne face, almost, with the Gatling gun, and it just says the gun room in white text, and then it says the Disneyland for... Man, this seems like a really cool idea. Oh, I gotta make that shirt. Um, alright. But any, anyway, I just wanted to make this video to kind of ramble about the early days of just, uh, it being in the family, you know, um, but again, yeah, that contrast of of going back to your to regular life, being a kid and growing up and being like, nope, you can't be a, you can't do that, or have those guns and stuff, and then coming here, and then we got to yeah actually be around that stuff, and it really wasn't until um you know there was a lot of well, there were definitely going to be, like, hand-me-downs. It was just eventual. But I, uh, from the age of 18 to the age of, like, 25, I moved around so much. Just like, oh, from this house to this house. There's going to be a lot of noise because this window is screwed into a fan, so I can't shut the door, the window. We're just going to have to go with the technical difficulties, guys, and grit our teeth and bear it. But what was I just saying? Um, now I don't remember. Hold on, give me a sec. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, moving from house to house to apartment to apartment. Uh, staying on couch, 
that apartment that just there was so much shuffling around that it's just I didn't think you know we just didn't think it was in the best interest to be like <laughs> having a bunch of guns while you're doing all that like never having a place to settle I guess so it wasn't until like my late 20s that I actually finally got some of my own to be responsible for and uh yeah that you know so I, I just remember thinking like for how long I um was fascinated by them and stuff and excited like I guess you like you respect them more that it took that long for that thing to happen you know as with anything I would say if you had to wait five years for a Nintendo 64 and then everybody else my god they have a subwoofer somebody has a subwoofer in 2023 almost 2024 Okay, it's about as good as it's going to get there. Now I don't remember what the hell I was saying again. No, but... Um, yes, yeah, so if it took you that long to get a Nintendo 64, by the time everybody else already has the PlayStation 2, you're just getting the N64. You're still like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I love this thing because I had to wait so long to to play it. But I'm gonna tell you guys what I'm looking at right now and I'll put some B-roll in this video. Rifle and handgun reloading data. Craftsman. Four cycle engine oil. Uncle Mike's law enforcement. I think that's a right hand um, holster is what it looks like. Mastercraft paintbrush. Wireless wall light. Craftsman flathead screwdrivers. Poster mounts. Wrenches. Q-tips that look to be from 2001. A federal ammunition large rifle primers. Federal premium large rifle match primers. Hornady lead pistol bullets. WD-40 easy reach. 10% solution for black powder, some kind of spray, metallic gray spray paint, shooter's bible, let's check this out, try not to make noise but the floor does. That's, that's what I call a good book. We 
with weathered pages. That's definitely from 1981. And definitely bought in 1981. Side of you of 1902, American Eagle Luger. The commercial version. Note the grip safety, which was not included in the Luger adopted by the German army in 1908. There's a picture of the Luger. A, a, a dream. 
dream house. Um, I think it would be really cool to have a room, like a John Wick-esque room, where uh, when he comes in, and the guy, uh, you know, with the, uh, the UK accent, or the, I can't remember, <laughs> UK accent, um, Mr. John Wick, what will you be having today? Let me do an impression, let me try. I'll be feeling like... Wait, what does he say? I don't even remember. What might be on the menu for tonight? Like stuff like that, you know what I'm talking about. Like having a room like that, maybe not as prestigious, but a bunch of just cool guns on display.
Okay, it's a sifter. We'll clean up to 350 cases per cycle. Okay, it, it cleans shell casings after you fire them. So you can re-use um, them. That's one thing you can do to save money after going to the range. That's what PAP does. We'll clean the shell casings and then reuse them. Well, guys, that was kind of a quick look at the gun room. Okay. Just wanted to, in the same theme, kind of, of um, looking back on the 10 years of this channel and going a little more in depth into some of the stuff. Because um, I really didn't, or don't tend to do that a whole lot. Um, you know, I do every once in a while, I guess, starting now, or... Um, you now know a little more of the story, going back to uh, when I was a kid, and being up in this room. I don't remember it ever being this hot up here, but, well, maybe I just was never here when it was really hot in the summer. A lot of lights in here, too. Whoa, that's a cool, like souvenir looking pistol like a flint lock all right guys um again crazy how quick 10 years passes um and the world changes so much too goes like this but guys hope you're all doing really well and as I keep saying, I really appreciate those who are still sticking by and have been here and even brand new um, for coming by and hanging out and interacting with the videos. Um, it's great, guys. It's, it's always appreciated and, and, uh, and great, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this little kind of like delve into this stuff. Uh, nothing fancy, just wanted to talk about some stuff and be in the gun room. This is the, what was the shirt idea? The gun room, the Disneyland of guns. And it's Mickey Mouse with a Gatling gun and a cigar. And five o'clock shadow with like a, like a and Max Payne face on. Alright, guys, we will see you for plenty more videos that will grace your feed. And if they're not coming across your feed, ring the notification bell. There's an idea, or just check every few days. Because I've had some people telling me that, they're like, hey man, haven't seen your videos come up in a few years. And I'm just like, what? All right, like they're just checking randomly because they haven't seen them pop up, so. Alright guys, we'll see you soon.